Ida. So today, come to work with me. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm taking you to work with me. So if you want to just sit and either listen to this or watch it, you know, do whatever you want. But you're coming to work with me. I'm sorry. I've got to bring you to work with me. So yeah, here we go. Um, so I'm going to prep the nails by starting with some cuticle work. So I'm using the cuticle bit, which the shape of the cuticle bit is perfect for cleaning out that nail fold and really getting in there and taking away any non-living tissue that, did I say tissue right then? Tissue, any non-living tissue that's attached to the nail plate. Um, this client of mine came all the way from Cambridge, which is very lovely of her. Um, she was very nice. She also does nails. She does very nice nails. Um, I had a little look at her work and I was like, oh, this girl is skilled, which actually put me under a little bit more pressure. <laughs> I was like, mm, these have got to be really good because, you know, not not that I don't do, you know, I try and make every client's nails good, but you don't really just feel that bit of pressure. I don't know if any of you guys have nail techs that come to you to have their nails done and you just feel a little bit more under pressure. So I'm going to use the um, proximal fold bit to exfoliate any non-living tissue away from around the cuticle area so basically i'm getting rid of all that dry crustacean that we have built up on the nails and we always tend to get it on our dominant hand of the middle finger and that's what i'm working on now you'll see i'm exfoliating some of that callus away so we're going to do that on all of the nails get rid of any of, any of that hard tissue it's non-living it's over keratinized yeah i don't need it be careful when you do it, don't add pressure, just let the bit do the work. It will just remove any dry skin and it'll just make it a lot smoother. Those dry bits at the side, you know, they tend to be the areas where um, clients will start to pick at. So if you can get that nice and smooth, you know that they're not going to start chewing the nails or chewing the skin or pecking the skin because having nice nails with you know, skin that's been pecked and chewed. That it doesn't look good, does it? And I'm one to talk because I'm, I'm I am one of those clients that does. You know, I, I do. You know, sit and mess with my cuticles. So I, and do you know why that is? I neglect myself, and I don't do my cuticles as well as I do other people's because struggle for time. That is my issue. And as a nail tech, it's just one of those things. Um, it's, by, it's like being a plumber or a decorator. Um, when you get home from work, I'm sure you don't want to do your plumbing or your decorating. And that's exactly how I feel about my own nails. I don't really like doing my own nails. I like them when they're done, but I don't particularly like doing them. But I love doing other people's. So I'm going to use our curved cuticle scissors to remove any bits of skin that are sticking up, that are completely dead. If they are white, they don't have a blood supply. That's the rule of thumb. And I know you're all thinking, what's she doing? She's putting cuticle oil on top of those nails. And then you're gonna put nails on. It's like, people say you can't do this, but believe me, you can. I want to rehydrate the skin that I have just been attacking with the proximal fold bit. I wanna rehydrate it. And that's fine to do. So I'm going to file the um, free edge, make it, make sure I've got like the tiniest free edge because we're going to sculpt these out. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to have a really long free edge. I want to just have like a mil or half a mil, ideally half a mil, just so the sculpting form can sit underneath that free edge. And the oil will be on there, but what we'll do is before we... Um, put the product on so before we put the acrylic on or anything like that we will remove that so i'm going to prep the nail by etching in with a 240 grit nail file these are the um replaceable files so we have a reusable metal center board and then you can stick on they're basically like a big nail sticker and that nail file sticker goes on to the metal center board honest to god absolute game changer they are so easy to use and they are the most hygienic way 
to do your client's nails because you can throw away your little sticker, your nail file sticker after, but you keep the center board. And they're actually, when you work out the price, they're actually really cheap. So here we go, we're just etching it into the nail. So we're just removing any surface shine and that's all you need to do. Make sure you get right up to the cuticle. You can do this with a sanding band if you like to use an electric file. Um, sometimes it is electric file, sometimes I do it with a nail file. It depends how I feel. And obviously you'll have your own preference. Do you like to prep a nail with a nail file or do you like to use a sanding band? I'd love to know. Please let me know. I want to know what everybody's favorite is because you know, some people like sanding bands, some people like files. So now I'm gonna wipe over the nails with cleanup solution. The cleanup solution is going to dehydrate the nail as well. It's not just for cleaning, it dehydrates. So we give that a really good clean all the way around those nail folds so we can um, make sure we dehydrate those. So wiping over with the cleanup solution will dehydrate it, like I said. It's gonna take away that oil that we put on but there'll be some oil that's penetrated through to the skin, which will keep it nice and supple and not dry as a bone. So we're going to fit sculpting forms. I'm going to check how they are fitting. Are they fitting as narrow as the natural nail? And this is a really important part of fitting a sculpting form. You want to make sure that the side walls and that skin at the side of your nails doesn't actually interfere with the fitting of the form. And then we're gonna get a bunch of glitters and we're gonna make a nice little concoction. I absolutely love this part. So we're gonna, what I'm, what I'm thinking while I'm doing this is, I want to have different textures, different reflective particles. I don't wanna just use like one flat glitter. I want different sizes, different colours, but within that same theme. So you'll see in that one, we're all green and bluey colour. And then in the other one, I've actually put some of the, the light mermaid scales. These are from the Sente. And then I've got some other glitters that I will mix as well. So once all your forms are on, we're going to prime the nail using a non-acid primer. This is going to act as your double-sided sticky tape. So when you put your acrylic on, it will stick like to a blanket. And I tell you, that stuff really sticks. Then we're gonna use clear acrylic and we are going to sculpt out a very thin layer. So you're kind of sculpting out a tip, if that makes sense, super thin. This is just gonna give you a little bit of structure. And then we're gonna go in with a nude powder. So, and we're going to pop that on and we're going to blend that back. So I'm using the Oscar the Wild brush, which is my ultimate favourite brush to do acrylic with because the release from the acrylic to the um, brush is really nice. The shape's nice. It's not too hard. It's not too soft. It's perfect. I love it. Obvs. I just love it because I use it all the time. Um, so on this nail, what we're going to do is do a smile line. So that's another reason that the clear base went down. We need that clear base because if we just sculpt straight onto the sculpting form a reverse smile line and then I come to file it, the form will pop off the product. So that clear, thin layer of acrylic will actually keep the form on to the product. If that makes sense. So I'm going to do the cuticle area. Notice how I worked from the smile line back to the cuticle. That's because the nail is warm and the sculpting form isn't. Now warmth from the finger will encourage the acrylic to set faster. So if we start from the most distal point of the finger, it will take longer to set, but we started there first. So by the time we get to the finger where it's warm, it will all start to set together, which makes it easier if you need to pinch the nail. So it's always good to start from the most distal point of the nail. 
um, unless you're kind of going to one bead it, you could do the whole lot together, but you need to be mindful about if you want to go in with a pinching tool and pinch it. If I started at the cuticle and worked my way down to the smile line, then when I came to pinch it, the area on the natural nail would be set. So the product will be set on the natural nail, but the free edge, you know, that extended smile line would still be quite smushy. It'd be like spongy. So it wouldn't really pinch properly. I hope that makes sense to you. So I'm going to do exactly the same on this nail. When I do the bead at the back, when I say the back, I'm talking about that cuticle area. We want a nice small bead, drain out the liquid from the brush, and then notice how I quickly wiped my brush so it was nice and sharp. So it was a nice paddle, so I can go in and I can start to manipulate the product. And notice how each time I re-wipe my brush. So I know there's no extra liquid being fed into that acrylic bead. So with this nail, I'm doing a full clear base. And that's because we're going to pack this nail with glitter. So what we're going to do is like a sandwich effect or a sandwich technique. We pull out and do the full length of the nail with clear. I clearly had a little bit too much there, so I've just lobbed that off with my brush um, by basically using the brush as a little tool to scrape off any excess. So once you're kind of happy with the shape, we're just going to smooth, smooth, smooth. And we're smoothing with the brush and making sure it's nice and thin. We want that product nice and thin because we're going to sandwich the glitter in between the two layers of clear. So you're gonna have, your first layer will be clear, and then you'll have glitter, and then you'll have clear again. So notice how I've gone back and pinched these. I test pinch them, and then I go in with the pinching tool. So we've sandwiched the glitter and all that shebang between the two layers. And we're gonna give that a pinch. Because that first layer of clear was so thin, that allows us to do that. So now we're gonna smile, we're gonna smile, we're gonna smile these smile lines. That does not make any sense whatsoever. Guys, it's been a long day. It's been a long gas day, okay? Um, I'm gonna file around the smile line. By doing this, it makes it nice and sharp. This is how you'll get a nice crisp smile line. And look at the angles. Notice the angles of the file. So I'm kind of like angling it ever so slightly. So it kicks under ever so slightly. And that makes you have a nice, straight, crisp, upright wall of product. And that is going to give you that beautiful, sharp smile line. Now, if you think it's not sharp enough right at those corners, some people really struggle at the corners, getting into those very high points that are right next to the skin. Sometimes it's hard with a file. If you go in with a metal file, that's gonna sharpen it even more. And that's gonna give you those really neat, crisp ears to the smile line. It's really a competition technique. Little top tip there for you. We use this all the time at competitions. It doesn't take long to do. If you're doing a client, it's well worth just sneaking up there with the metal file just to make that nice and crisp and check the corners all the time make sure you remove the dust get that dusting brush and get rid of the dust so you can really see what's going on you want to be able to see those corners nice and sharp we're going to do exactly the same on this nail i'm starting with the normal file so this is our metal centerboard file 
and we've got I think it's a 150 grit I normally go with a 150 grit when I'm doing this just to make it nice and sharp if your clear is too thick you can always file that a little bit as well if you need to Then again, in with that metal file, just to really crisp the hell out of it. You know, it's going to be that sharp. It's gone cut. So you notice I dusted, then I checked. I'm checking, I'm checking, I'm dusting, I'm checking. We're good. So because these have got smile lines and I really want to make them super sharp, I'm going to use our black gel polish, which is called Void. And I'm using the Miko Aqua Brush and I'm brushing that around that wall. So that wall of product is gonna hold that black gel polish. And what this will do, it will make it really, really sharp because you've got such a contrast between that nude acrylic powder and the black. It's just gonna really sharpen it up. It is, you know, like a 3D French design, but we are gonna put um, glitter as well because we need it all match and we need all the glitter. These nails are like bejeweled. They are rich in color. They are bejeweled like, oh my God, they, they're giving me emeralds, amethyst, precious metals. That is the vibe we're going with here. We're gonna cure that in the lamp. Then I'm just gonna take the forms off the ones that are already set if i can give that another little pinch i will do so if they're sort of almost set you can take the form off it's safe to do so it's going to make your client feel a little bit more comfortable as well so now we're going in with the glitter and i've picked up a bead of clear acrylic and then i've smushed that straight into the glitter and we're going to smush 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 and position those particles in the most random order possible um, I don't want to smush them all together. I still want to see a separation of colour. So my green goes all the way around the spiral line. Then we've added in that sort of burgundy colour as well. And we're going to create a French extension. Adding in a little bit of gold leaf. Which really does just make it pop. Some of the mermaid scales. I have no idea what they're called, but that's what I'm going to call If you want to know what I've used in this video, it will be listed below in the description box. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Because if you're not subscribing, oh, I'm going to cry. I'm just going to go in a corner and cry. So please subscribe because, you know, I don't want to do all this effort for nothing. I want to educate you all, but I want to know you're there. And I want you to see all of our videos because we find a lot of people don't see all the videos. Now and then they'll see a video and then they just won't see any for months. And then, oh, we'll pop up again. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and then you'll always see our videos. I'm going to encapsulate the glitter with a clear acrylic. And that's going to sandwich that all together. It's going to protect, it's going to give strength. And once we smooth that out, we can let that set. And that's going to air dry. Unlike gel, acrylic will air dry. Next nail, here we go again. Picking up the um, clear and the glitter and popping that in and creating that free edge. Now, when you're using different size glitters, you'll find that when you go up to those 
very, very corners or wings of the spiral line, you may have some of the larger particles that will become a little bit more troublesome to get in to those small areas. So you can kind of use the, um, the tiny glitter for that. And we've also put some shell into these nails, which I love these little bits of shell. I think they just add another dimension. They're those kind of nails where you can just keep looking at them and you'll see more and more things. Add in a little bit of gold leaf again. And then when you're happy with what is inside your bejeweled nails, we can encapsulate that with clear. Notice how I'm keeping an eye on that other nail and then making sure I'll give it a little bit of a pinch. And then we can encapsulate this nail now. So we're just encapsulating the free edge. So we're making sure we smooth that over, making sure that the acrylic encapsulates all of it right up to the end and right up to those um, little ears of the smile line. Now this client of mine actually went and did a competition so i do a competition called lunar skill for the professional beauty exhibition um it's a beauty show that i absolutely love doing and i um host a competition called lunar skill so you come along and you watch me do a technique and then you go to the competition floor and you recreate it and i did not know that this client was going to do that competition she did tell me she wanted to get into doing comps, so I told her, you know, the different competitions that were out there. We had a good discussion about what she, you know, what kind of comps that she'd like to do and the different rules and things like that. So she went and did the Learner Skill competition and I didn't actually know she was there. So I actually was giving out the awards for the competition, like the competition winners, and she won. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God, you've won. Like, oh my God. I was like, I did your nails about a month ago when you've come. And she said to me, you gave me the kick up the arse to get into doing competitions. So I was so thrilled to see her there and to see how well she did. Honest to God, it was so, so nice. It really warmed my heart. I was like, so are people do listen to me and I'm not just, you know, chatting rubbish I, I, I love the fact that people are taking on my advice and they are stretching their abilities and going out there and doing competitions you know so hopefully I want to see you guys that watch this that you watch this video please come to a competition and I might just see you there and judge you and I might be able to give you loads of feedback and you never know I might be handing out a first place prize to you so on the thumb, we are going to do the same what we did with the pinky and the index finger. We are going to put down that clear layer and then we're going to go on with the glitter. So we've got a lovely surface area to work with on the thumb. I think the thumbs get forgotten about, but I do like doing a thumb because obviously it's bigger. I've got more surface area. We can really go to town with the artwork. So we're just adding this colour in, which I love all this glitter. I just love the combination. Um, and when, if you come to me for a set of nails, I do a consultation first. I get my little book out. We go through the things that you like, the shape and the length that you like. And then we go through colours, different things that you've been inspired by. And we come up with a design that's been customised just for you. And that's one thing that I really love about my job. I love coming up with a new design just for that client, making them feel great. And they walk out with such lovely nails that I'm so proud of. And I'm so blessed to be able to have lovely customers that come from all over the world. And I just love them when they come. I have not had a bad client yet, which is amazing. When I have a bad client, don't worry, I'll tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to know how to book an appointment with me the easiest thing you can do 
is either send an email to nails at kirstenmeekin.com or the even more simple thing you can do is go onto my Instagram. So go onto Kirsty Meekin on Instagram, find me, go into my highlights at the top of Instagram and you will find book an appointment with me and you can follow the links there or go into my bio and I feel like I need all the areas to be covered. So you can email, you can go into the highlights on my Instagram or you can go into the bio section of my Instagram and there is a link there. You can go and have a little look. You can see what services I provide and you can see all the cost and all the timings and everything like that. And you can get yourself booked in. So if you've got a birthday coming up and you want to like really treat yourself or you want your husband or your missus to treat yourself, then get yourself booked in girls and when you book in with me what you get is um, I feel like you get a whole experience because not only do you get great nails you come and you actually have your nails done in our YouTube studio so you get to see the behind the scenes of what we do all the cameras are set up, everything's still laid out, just like it is when we film. You'll get to see all the screens and you'll get to see all the backdrops. And, and the, the best thing is you can come and see all the different products that we use on this channel because we use a multitude of products. So obviously we use the Kirsty Meekin brand, but we also use glitters from the Sente, we use stuff from Nail Camille, we use stuff from Max Estrada, we use Jalica Store. Oh my God, the amount of things that we use is just absolutely amazing. And it's like, you know, heaven, it's nail heaven in here. So once we've got these done, we are going to file them. So I've got my little extractor, or shall we call it distractor? Cause it's, well, distractor, cause it distracts everybody. Cause it's a bit loud. It's, it does the job though. It's a little bit loud, but aren't all extractors. I've not yet found a dust extractor that doesn't produce, you know, noise. I want a silent one. I want a silent extractor. But uh, I can't find one. This is the metal file going up those side walls. So if you struggle with filing away product up the side walls, if you go in with the metal file, it gets it nice and crisp. And then we chose out some gorgeous stones and crystals to really bejewel this gorgeous set. And I think you'll agree that this colour combo of crystals really suits this set of nails. What I also do when you come to an appointment is if you're a nail tech already, what I like to offer you is not only a cup of tea or a coffee, I say to you, do you want to fill these nails yourself? And if you want to fill those nails yourself, we'll create a design that's easy for you to fill and you can maintain them yourself. At least you've got that structure laid down, you've got a design in there, so that, you know, something that you can fill and a lot of people love that you know they really take that opportunity to um be able to you know they don't have to come every week don't get me wrong i've got clients that come all the time and they come every every three weeks but then i've got people that come for a special occasion but then they want their nails to last so they fill them themselves because they're already a nail tech and it's just a little bit easy for them to fill once they've got a set on so that's something to think about as well. I always offer that. So once I'm happy with the positioning, I will cure that. And then I'll go on with the glossy top coat. And this just brings the nails to life. We love a top coat application because you just get to see all that gorgeous glitter. And it just looks pretty magical. They like, they're reminding me of like an Aladdin's cave of jewels. And by top coating them, you are not only making all the glitter visible and you can see all the different facets of the glitter, you're sealing the nail. So it's going to last and it's going to be nice and shiny. It's going to be really durable. Notice that I kick the brush around the edge of the nail. So I give that a nice sealed capped edge. And then we're going to finish off with cuticle oil. So there you are, guys. Everything I've used today will be listed below. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok and all that shebang. And I'll see you in the next one. Toronto.